alfalfa, alfalfa, and alfalfa once again. What's up, 23% Nation? This is your man, Coach D. Today, I'm back with vegetable of the day, the one and only alfalfa. But let's remember something. We're talking about alfalfa sprouts, not alfalfa the character. <laughs> So guys, maybe you've heard of alfalfa sprouts before. Maybe you've eaten them. Maybe you love them. Maybe you dislike them. Maybe you hate them. Maybe you didn't even know that they exist. Well, whatever the case may be, please listen and watch on. Why? Because we're about to dive just a little deeper into the wonderful world of the alfalfa sprout. All right. First up, a little bit of background information. Alfalfa sprouts come from a germinated alfalfa seed. When the seed germinates, it creates a shoot, which is then harvested before the plant matures fully. So take a look at the picture. As you notice at the bottom right, you see the seeds that have cracked open and now they have sprouted a nice little shoot, right? So basically that is, that is exactly what an alfalfa sprout is. It is an immature alfalfa plant, <laughs> okay? So there we have it, guys. A little bit of background information about the one and only alfalfa sprout. All right, believe it or not, more background information. Sprouts are filled with many of the great benefits found in seeds and actually are healthier because the process of sprouting brings out many enzymes. They also carry more protein, vitamins, and minerals as well as a lower proportion of starch than unsprouted seeds. Interesting. The starches are turned into simple sugars and are thus easier to digest. Wow, how nice is that? So guys, the question is, what's better, the sprout or the seed? Well, as we just said, it's the sprout, <laughs> okay? So at your earliest convenience, run out to your local grocery store or farmer's market and please buy some alfalfa sprouts. All right, now it's time for a few fun facts. Sprouting dates back as far as 5,000 years when Chinese physicians used sprouts medicinally. In the 1700s, sailors discovered sprouts' ability to prevent scurvy, which was the most common cause of death on long voyages. Now, take a look at the picture. As you can see, we have sailing ships from the 1700s <laughs> probably on the atlantic ocean coming from the old world or we can say europe traveling to the americas now unfortunately scurvy was the leading cause of death during that transition from europe to the americas so what they found out was that hey a lot of our sailors are lacking vitamin c and other very important phytonutrients so they decided to give them alfalfa sprouts and look what happened they lived so there we have it guys a few fun facts about the one and only alfalfa sprout look more fun facts when it comes to purchasing and using alfalfa sprouts be sure to wash them thoroughly when returning home and keep the sprouts properly refrigerated that's right guys try not to let them stay out on your kitchen counters if they begin to smell musty, do not consume them. So there we have it. We now know exactly how to store our alfalfa sprouts once we get them home. All right, now it's time for the not so fun facts. Sprouts have a reputation in connection with foodborne illnesses. Oh no, say it ain't so, Coach D. That's right, guys, foodborne illnesses. Because they're consumed raw or lightly cooked, they do carry a risk. Sprouts need a warm and humid environment to grow, which is also the environment ideal for bacterial growth. Oh no, salmonella. Sprouts contaminated with salmonella and E. coli have caused at least 30 outbreaks since 1996. So here we have it, guys. We now know that we need to be extra careful when we eat alfalfa sprouts, right? So that's why earlier, I said that when you take them, when you get them home, it's important to put them inside the refrigerator. Do not allow them to sit out on your kitchen counters. Why? Because it's humid and that could cause bacterial growth, right? 
So if anything, we want to keep the salmonella and the E. coli out of our bodies, but we definitely want the alfalfa sprouts in. All right, more not so more not so fun facts. Also, because of high levels of vitamin K, individuals taking blood thinners should avoid alfalfa sprouts. This can be a major interaction, so check with your doctor before consuming alfalfa sprouts. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a heart condition and you're currently on blood thinners, then please talk to your doctor about consuming alfalfa sprouts. They may tell you to completely avoid them, eliminate them from your diet, right? Or they may say that you can have them in moderation. Whatever the case may be, please consult with your physician before eating more alfalfa sprouts. All right, more not so fun facts. Oh no, more studies are needed to determine exactly how and why certain disorders are affected by alfalfa sprouts. But the following individuals should avoid alfalfa sprouts until more is known. Diabetics using other herbal supplements and medications known to lower blood sugar. Also, individuals using medications that increase sensitivity to sunlight. Also, individuals using immunosuppressants. And last but not least, estrogen sensitive conditions, right? So there we have it guys. We now know who needs to watch out for alfalfa sprouts. People who are diabetic, people who have, <clears throat> uh, who are, who are estrogen sensitive, people who are on immunosuppressants and people who are on medications that increase sensitivity to sunlight. So we know who should and who should not eat more alfalfa sprouts. All right, guys, it's time to move forward and talk about the 520 rule. Ladies and gentlemen, the 520 rule is all about food labels. That's right. It helps us to read and understand food labels. Ultimately, it's a guide. It's a guide that lets us know whether or not a food or beverage item is a good source or not a good source of any particular nutrient. Now, when we talk about the 520 rule, really what we're talking about is percent daily value, abbreviated percent DV. Now, let's take a look at our sample food label. As you can see, the food label is divided into three main parts. We have the purple portion, the yellow portion, and then we have the blue portion, right? So let's take it portion by portion. Now, the purple portion is the percent daily value column. Now, as you can see, percent DV is represented by a percentage. Now, basically it's a scale that has a low end of 0% and a high end of 100%. Now, when we talk about the yellow portion, we're talking about saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, and sodium. Unfortunately, these nutrients do a really good job at promoting sickness, illness, and disease within the body temple. So when it comes to their percent DV, you want to make sure that it is as close to zero as possible. Next, when we talk about the blue nutrients, such as dietary fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron, which basically represent all vitamins and minerals, these nutrients do just the opposite of the yellow nutrients. Rather than promote sickness, illness, and disease, they promote health, and wellness within the body. So if anything, you want to make sure that the percent DVs for these nutrients are as close to 100% as possible. Now, when it comes to the 520 rule, I would like to be a little more specific than what our diagram offers. If a food or beverage item offers anywhere from 0% to 9% DV of any particular nutrient, then that food is considered not a good source of that particular nutrient. Next, if a food or beverage item offers 10% to 19% DV of any particular nutrient, then that food or beverage item is considered a good source of that nutrient. Lastly, if the food or beverage item offers 20% DV or greater, then that food or beverage item is considered an excellent source of that particular nutrient. So there we have it guys, the ins and outs about the 520 rule. All right, now it's time to dive into the nutrition facts of alfalfa sprouts. So for today's lecture, we're gonna say that a single serving of alfalfa sprouts is equal to three cups, or we can say 100 grams. So in this single serving, we're only gonna get 23 calories, 2.1 grams of carbohydrates, 3.99 grams of protein, and who thought alfalfa sprouts lacked protein? Well, as you can clearly see, 
they don't. 0 0.69 grams of fat, 1.9 grams of fiber, amazing. Now, let's talk about vitamins and minerals. First up is vitamin K coming in at 38% DV, excellent source. Vitamin C coming in at 14% DV, good source. Folate comes in at only 9% DV, not a good source. Manganese comes in at 9% DV, not a good source. Then we have copper coming in at 8% DV, not a good source. Phosphorus coming in at 7% DV, not a good source. Magnesium and riboflavin, each coming in at 7% DV, not a good source. Zinc comes in at 6% DV, not a good source. Then we have iron and thiamine coming in at only 5% DV, not a good source. And lastly is vitamin A coming in at only 3% DV, not a good source. So there we have it, guys, the nutrition facts about the one and only alfalfa sprout. All right, now it's time to talk about the health benefits. Now that we're familiar with the nutrition facts, let's talk about the health benefits. But before we do, I want to offer you this. Guys, let's first talk about the principle of cause and effect. Now, the principle of cause and effect basically states that every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause. There really is no such thing as chance and or luck. In other words, everything happens for a reason. So I say that to say this. If you're diseased, well, believe it or not, you put something in your body that caused it. Versus if you're healthy, well, believe it or not, you put something in your body that caused that too. So the question is, what are the, the health benefits of alfalfa sprouts? But more importantly, what are the phytonutrients, or we can use the word medicines, that cause these effects? Well, let's go through them one by one. Benefit number one reduce the risk of breast cancer. Great. So the question is, what is the medicine? What is the cause? What is the phytonutrient? Well, it's the isoflavones and other phytoestrogens. Benefit number two, minimizes menopause symptoms and excessive menstruation. Great. Which phytonutrients are responsible? Well, say hello to vitamin K and phytoestrogens. Benefit number three, prevents osteoporosis. Great. Which phytonutrients responsible? Well, vitamin K and manganese. Benefit number four, lowers blood glucose levels and treats diabetes. Great. The question is, which phytonutrient is responsible? Well, say hello to fiber. Benefit number five, has anti-aging agents. Great. So maybe eating more alfalfa sprouts will give us that youthful look. <laughs> How nice. The question is, which phytonutrients are responsible? Well, say hello to antioxidants and vitamin K. Benefit number six, combats cholesterol. Great. The question is, which phytonutrients cause this? Well, antioxidants. And benefit number seven, well, can, can increase milk supply in nursing mothers. How great is that? Not only for the mom, but also for the baby. So the question is, which phytonutrient is responsible? Well, say hello to vitamin C. So there we have it, guys. Seven amazing health benefits from the one and only alfalfa sprout. All right, now it's time to talk about food. Guys, we're going to talk about our go-to website for everything vegan, right? Say hello to ForksOverKnives.com. So as usual, went to the website, did my research, came across this amazing dish I want to share with you. It's entitled Summer's Best Avocado Toast. Take a look at the picture. Looks delicious. Don't you agree? Now, here's what you're going to find if you are interested, if you're motivated, if you're inspired. Go to the description box. Why? I'm providing you with a link. It's going to take you directly to the recipe. Now, when you get there, you're going to find some amazing stuff. Number one, you're going to find an ingredient list. Number two, you're going to find cooking instructions. And of course, you'll find the cooking time, right? So do me a favor. Click on the link, make it, taste it, come back to the video and share your thoughts. So there we have it, guys. One amazing vegan alfalfa sprout recipe from ForksOverKnives.com. All right, 23% Nation, I hear you. A lot of you say, well, Coach D, thanks for the fun facts and the not so fun facts and for the nutrition facts. But what I really want to know is when in the world should I eat more alfalfa sprouts? Well, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, if that's your question, 
than the perfect day and I do mean the perfect day to eat more plants or shall I say alfalfa sprouts is nature day that's right guys nature day nature day happens to be the first day of the 23% challenge now what in the world is the 23% challenge well let's talk about it very briefly the 23% challenge is a monthly seven-day wellness program that is designed to help improve your health your wealth your relationships Oh, and it also helps to save good old planet Earth. Now, here's the thing. The 23% challenge is monthly, meaning every month, meaning January through December. And it's only seven days long, but it's the first seven days of every month. The first all the way through the seventh. Now, here's the thing. Nature Day is the first day of the challenge, which means Nature Day is the first day of the month. That's right. So whether it's June 1st, July 1st, or August 1st, it's always Nature Day. Okay, so maybe at this point in time, you're interested in learning more about Nature Day. Hopefully you are. And you want to know what it's all about, right? Well, guys, Nature Day is all about getting closer to nature through food, but specifically plant foods only. Now, I do understand that eating plant foods only for some people may be a challenge. So we can take baby steps, right? So how about this? How about only eating plant foods before 12 p.m., right? That way, after 12 p.m., you can eat whatever you want to eat. Or maybe we can flip it. How about we only eat plant foods and drink only water after 12 p.m.? That way, before 12 p.m., you can eat whatever you want to eat, <laughs> okay? Now, some of us may think that that's a little too easy and we may want to up the ante. Well, if that's you, then try to become a 3% vegan. Now, what does that mean? Well, that's anyone, man, woman, or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only one day out of an entire month. Next up is a 10% vegan. Now, that's anyone, man, woman, or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only three days out of an entire month. Next up is a 17% vegan. Now, that's anyone, man, woman, or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only five days out of an entire month. And lastly is the ultimate 23% vegan. Now, that's anyone, man, woman, or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water the first seven days of every month. Now, technically, that's what Coach D considers himself to be. So now the question is, Coach D, what do you eat? Well, guys, it's simple. I only eat from the five food groups of plant foods, which happen to be fruits, vegetables and herbs, nuts and seeds, legumes, meaning beans and peas, and let's not forget about whole grains. And of course, I only drink water. So there we have it, guys, a little more information about Nature Day. All right, so maybe you're ready. Maybe you're ready to maybe dip your toe in or maybe you're ready to dive deep. Whatever the case may be, we need to know who exactly is Nature Day for. So here we go. Maybe you're suffering from what I like to call the big four. Now, what are the big four? Well, heart disease, obesity, cancer, and type 2 diabetes, guys. Uh, maybe you have skin issues such as eczema, psoriasis, pimples, acne. Maybe you have digestive issues such as constipation or maybe IBS. Maybe you have mental issues like depression, sadness, maybe you're angry all the time, or maybe you just can't focus or concentrate. And so maybe right now you're looking for a natural, holistic approach to becoming more healthy. It's easy. Eat more plants. Maybe you want to lose body fat. Maybe you want to build muscle. It's easy. Try our vegan lean or vegan bulk program. Maybe you're looking to, to transition from a or shall I say from the standard American diet to a more plant-based whole food diet? It's easy. Or maybe you just want to eat more plants. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you meet any of these requirements, right, then Nature Day is definitely for you. So there we have it, guys. We now know who exactly Nature Day is for. All right. So now that I fully believe that you're ready to dive deep into nature day i want to offer you a few tips why because i want your nature day to be successful so tip number one go to your local grocery store now when you get there you're going to go to three places 
Number one is the produce section. Number two is the freezer aisle. Number three is the canned good aisle. Now, why these places? Well, the produce section is where you're going to find all of your fresh plant foods. Why the freezer aisle? Well, that's where you're going to find all of your frozen plant foods. Why the canned good aisle? Well, that's where you're going to find all of your canned plant foods. Now, some of us may be wondering, Coach D, which is best, fresh, frozen, or canned? Well, if I got to put it to you this way, fresh is always best. Frozen, believe it or not, comes in a very close second. However, all the way in the back, trailing right, is going to be the can. Why, why are canned plant foods not the best? Well, they're canned. So that means that they're going to have a lot of preservatives, a lot of additives, a lot of coloring, and maybe even some sweeteners. So rather than you reaping all the amazing benefits of the plant food, unfortunately, you're going to put a lot of toxins in your body that could possibly render you susceptible to disease. And that's the last thing that we want. So if you, if you really want my opinion, go with fresh or frozen, definitely not canned. However, it's not off the list, especially if you are on a restricted budget. Tip number two, go to the prepared dishes section. Now, once you're done with the freezer aisle, the canned good aisle and the produce section, walk on over to the prepared dishes section. Now, basically this is where they're gonna have the cooked foods. When you get there, talk to the person behind the counter and ask them if they have any vegan, not vegetarian items. Ask for a sample, don't worry, it's free. Now, providing you like it, purchase the food by the pound or maybe even two, maybe even three pounds if you really, really, really like it. Tip number three, go visit your local farmer's market. Now, farmer's markets are amazing. Why? Because they cater to the all natural, non-GMO plant food market. That's right, guys. So if you're the type of person who has to have all natural, non-pesticide, no herbicide, no GMOs, right? Then please visit your local farmer's market. Tip number four, it's time for us to, to support the vegan community by eating at a vegan restaurant. Now, vegan restaurants are amazing. They're wonderful. Why? Because they do a really good job at hiring vegan chefs. Now, here's the good thing about vegan chefs. Number one, they know how to cook plant foods. And number two, they know which plant foods to combine to give us the most nutritious, delicious dishes. Tip number five, you may want to get a, a subscription to a vegan meal prep company. Now, why do I suggest this? Well, a lot of us don't know how to cook plant foods. A lot of us don't want to cook plant foods. A lot of us don't have time to cook plant foods, right? So if that's you, then allow someone else to do the cooking for you. Now, here's the good thing about these vegan meal prep companies is that they make them, they deliver them, you eat them. Yes, it's just that simple. So there we have it, guys. Five amazing tips to help make your nature day successful. All right, it's time for our question of the day, and this comes from yours truly. We want to know, in the 1700s, sailors discovered Sprout's ability to prevent blank, which was the most common cause of death on long voyages. Now, I believe I covered this information earlier in the lecture. So if you don't remember, if you didn't hear it, simply hit rewind. And please write your answer in the comment box below. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. I definitely want to thank you for listening. As always, let's eat well, feel well, think well, do well, be well. This is your man, Coach D. Now, before I sign off, I got to ask you to please subscribe, like, and share the video, especially if you love alfalfa sprouts. Also, don't forget to use our three-word mantra. It's hashtag eat more plants. As stated earlier, my name is Coach D. I'm signing off. Always remember to take care. God bless and never, ever forget that Coach D loves you.